In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the real zeros of a polynomial function. So for polynomials of degree at least three, um, factoring them is much harder than it is for quadratic equations. Um, so we need to use a theorem called the rational zeros theorem or the rational roots theorem, sometimes it's referred to, um, in order to figure out what even to check for, to, to look for roots or factors. Uh, and then to take out those factors, once we find them, uh, we use the factor theorem which, um, and the remainder theorem. So let's look at those ones first. So w if, we know, um, if we know what we're factoring by, how we do it. Uh, so this is a little bit of review. Uh, so suppose I have this polynomial. Um, f of x is 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Um, so we're going to use synthetic division or long division to divide by x plus 2. Um, so remember that this, if you're using synthetic division, it's always x minus c. So this is actually x minus negative 2. So our c value is a negative 2. So I'm going to use synthetic division here, um, but I would encourage you to use uh, long division as well. And in the subsequent video, I'll do the other method. I'll do long division. Um, so here, we're going to have the negative 2. That's our c value. And then we put the coefficients of our polynomial in order of um, power of x. So we have 2, minus 3, and 1. OK, so this is the x squared, the x, and the constant term. Uh, so then we bring the first one down. So that's a 2. And then I do negative 2. Uh, times 2, and that gives me negative 4, which goes here. And then I add those two, so that's going to give me negative 7. So then I do negative 2 times negative 7, so that gives me positive 14. Then I add that, and I get 15. Okay, now these two make up the quotient. Okay, and the last one here, this is the remainder. Okay, so we would have a quotient of, so now the power decreases by 1, so this is the x and the constant. So our quotient would be 2x minus 7, and the remainder would be 15. Um, so in the other video, uh, the extra video, I'm going to do the same thing but with long division, in case you prefer that method. So we can write f of x as the quotient times the divisor, so that's going to be the 2x minus 7 times our divisor, which was x plus 2, and then plus the remainder. Okay, so that's what it would, you could write it that way. And if we wanted to find f of negative 2, okay, so we could plug into the original, so that would be 2 times negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 plus 1. Um, so that's negative 2 squared is 4, so this is going to be 8, plus 6 plus 1, so 15. Um, or you could plug into the um, form we just got up here, which is going to be easier because I have that x plus 2 factor. So this would be 2 times minus 2 minus 7 times minus 2 plus 2 plus 15. So the first one is minus 11, but it's multiplied by 0. So that just cancels out, and we just get 15. Okay, so either way, you can use either, but notice that we got the remainder. So that this is the idea behind the remainder theorem. So if f of x is a polynomial, um, if we divide f of x by some factor x minus c, then the remainder that we should get is just f of c, so f evaluated at c. Um, so that's how you compute the remainder. So I'm going to leave example 2 for you to do, and I'm going to move straight into the factor theorem now. Um, so if f of x is a polynomial, then x minus c is a factor of f of x, if and only if f of c is equal to 0. Okay. So what that says is that the remainder Okay, which we know is now f of c from the remainder theorem is 0. So that means that x minus c divides f of x evenly, right? There's no remainder. Um, so uh, I'll leave you to check number 3 here. 
So let's go right into number four. So here, um, f of negative one is equal to zero. So that means the remainder is zero. Um, so this means that x minus negative one or x plus one is a factor of f of x, okay, which is the two x cubed plus 11 x squared plus 18 x plus nine. Um, so that means it is a factor. So we should expect a remainder of zero, okay? And we want a factor completely, okay? So we know this is a factor, so we might as well divide it out. So I'm gonna use synthetic division. Um, so that's gonna be negative one. And then I want my coefficients, so two, 11, 18, and nine. Okay, so this is x cubed, x squared, x, and the constant. So we bring the first one down and negative one times two is negative two, and I add those, so that's gonna give me nine. Negative one times nine is negative nine. I add those, that's gonna give me nine again. Negative one times nine is negative nine. I add those, I get zero, okay? Now I should, I'm expecting the remainder here to be zero. Okay, so that's good. Um, these other things give me the quotient. Actually, oops. Okay, so this gives me the quotient is, um, so instead of x cubed, it's gonna start with x squared. Okay, so it's gonna be two x squared plus nine x plus nine. Okay, so that's my quotient. So that means that f of x is x minus negative one or x plus one times the quotient, okay, plus zero. Okay, so that we don't really need that, but plus zero. Now we want to factor completely. So now what I want to do is factor this um, quadratic, okay, which we know how to do. So here I want two numbers that multiply to give positive 18 and add to give nine. So that's going to be three and six. So I'm gonna have two x squared plus six x plus three x plus nine. And then I'm gonna factor by grouping. So I'm gonna take two x out of the first two and that's gonna leave me with x plus three. Three out of the next two and that's gonna leave me with x plus three. And then I can factor out the x plus three. And then I'll be left with two x plus three. So here is it factored completely. So we have, um, we factored as far as possible. Um, so, so here we knew what to, what to start with. So we had something that we knew was a factor, um, but it's hard to find those things. Okay, so unless it's given, um, so we know how to check if a given candidate is a factor. Okay, but how do we find these candidates? So there's infinitely many rational numbers that we could check and we don't want to have to check all of them. Okay, um, so this theorem gives us a relatively short list of candidates depending on your polynomial. So if you have a polynomial f of x uh, in the fo standard form, okay, so a n x to the n plus a n minus one x to the n minus one, etc. So the a's are the constants or the coefficients uh, and then you have the powers of x in decreasing order. Um, and you don't have the first, the leading coefficient or the constant coefficient being zero. Because the first coefficient being zero means that your polynomial just is less, less the degree is smaller. The last co constant coefficient being zero means that you can factor out an x. It means that every term has an x, so you should start by doing that. Okay, so assuming that doesn't happen, then all rational zeros, okay, so all rational zeros have to be of the form um, factor of a zero, so the factors of the constant term divided by factors of the leading coefficient. Okay, so that's how, how we do it. Um, so this does not say that every number of this form is a zero, okay? It just says that potential zeros are those. So these are all the ones that could be zeros, but not all of them will be. So to determine which ones actually are zeros, 
You could plug them into f of x and see if the result is zero. Um, or you could use synthetic division and see if you get remainder zero. Um, but the theorem says nothing about irrational zeros, okay? Or zeros of a polynomial that, so if your um, coefficients are not integers, then this doesn't work either. Okay, so each coefficient here is an integer. Um, okay, but so it doesn't tell you a lot, um, but it is helpful for many, many polynomials. So let's do one example, and then I'll leave one for you to do. So we want all potential rational zeros of this polynomial here, and then we want to factor it. Okay, so that means, um, so possible zeros... are um, divisors of the constant coefficient, which is negative 2, divided by divisors of the leading coefficient, which is 2. Okay, so that's the divisors of minus 2 is plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2, and the same for the divisors of 2. Okay, so if I take plus or minus 1 and divide by plus or minus 1, Obviously, I get plus or minus 1. If I take plus or minus 1 and divide by plus or minus 2, I'm going to get plus or minus 1 half. Uh, if I take 2 on the top, plus or minus 2, divide by plus or minus 1, I'm going to get plus or minus 2. And then plus or minus 2 over plus or minus 2 is again plus or minus 1, but we already have that. Okay, so we don't actually need that one. Okay, so those are all my possible, um, all my possible roots, okay, are those. So now we just want to, we want to try, see which ones are going to work. So let's say, I mean, I usually try the number one first if it's there, uh, which it actually always is there. Um, so if I try to plug in one into the function, I get two times one cubed plus 5 times, oops, 1 squared, plus 1 plus, oops, minus 2. Okay, so that gives me 2 plus 5 plus 1 minus 2, which is 6. Okay, not 0. So that means x minus 1 is not a factor. Okay, so I didn't find one. Maybe we try negative 1. 2 times negative 1 cubed plus 5 times negative 1 squared plus negative 1 minus 2. So I get 2 times, so negative 1 cubed is negative 1, so that's minus 2. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, so that's going to be 5. And then I have minus 1 minus 2. So I have 5 negatives and 5 positives. That actually gives me 0. So this means that x plus 1 is a factor. Okay, or x equals negative 1 is a root. Okay, so that's good. Um, so we found a factor. So we can divide it out. So let's say we want to use synthetic division. Okay, but again, you could use either type. So I want my polynomial. So I put the coefficients 2, 5, 1, and negative 2. Bring that down. So that's a 2. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Add those, I get 3. Negative 1 plus, times 3 is negative 3. Add those, I get minus 2. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Add that to negative 2 and I get 0, which I knew. Okay, so that's good. Um, so this, these part make my quotient. Okay, so that means that f of x is going to be, um, so we factored out x plus 1, and then it's going to multiply by this quotient, so that's going to be 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. Okay, now, now I have, so we could keep going in the same fashion, um, but here I have a quadratic. So we have other methods that we can do for quadratics. So here I want two numbers that multiply to give negative 4, add to give 3, so that's going to be positive 4 and negative 1. So this is going to be 2x squared plus 4x minus x minus 2. 
And then I can factor by grouping, just like we did before. So I'm going to factor out 2x from the first two, and that's going to leave me x plus 2. Factor out a minus, and that's going to leave me x plus 2. And then I can factor out the x plus 2. And then I'm going to have 2x minus 1 left over. Okay, so factored completely f of x is x plus 1 times x plus 2 times 2x minus 1. Okay, so that is our factor completely. Now notice, now that we have the factored form, we would have had also, so if I plug in f of negative 2, I should get 0. And if I plug in f of 1 half, I should also get 0. Okay, and notice that these were possible rational roots. Okay, so those were in our list. If we had tried them, we would have also got 0. And we could have um, done the same thing. Um, so it just depends what you try and which one you find. So you, you end up with the same factored form, but your answer might look um, slightly different than your friend's answer, maybe, uh, the method that you get there. Um, so I'm going to leave this example for you. Okay, and now it's an x to the fourth power. So um, you might have to do the rational roots thing a couple of times, um, depending, maybe not. Um, and then answer some questions about it. Uh, just a couple of notes, though, before I leave you. Um, a polynomial oops, um, has as many factors as it does degree. Okay, so you cannot have more zeros than you, the degree of the polynomial. Uh, and every polynomial with real coefficients can be uniquely factored into a product of linear factors and quadratic factors that don't reduce further. Okay, so at the end, your answer should look the same, uh, even if you get there using a different um, order, taking out roots at different times. Uh, that's okay. It's a unique, so you should get the same the same breakdown.